Hi, my name is Bookie Youssef. I'm a senior leader, science teacher and coach. And this video will be a short reflection of the distance learning that took place in the United Kingdom when we went into lockdown during the spring and summer term of 2020. Lockdown in the UK formally began on the 23rd of March 2020. For schools, this meant that young people remained off-site unless they were the children of key workers or our most vulnerable students. Students who remained off-site continued their learning remotely. After several months of remote or distance learning, I want to reflect upon three specific aspects. What went well? challenges that were experienced and considerations for the future with regards to contingency remote learning plans that schools and colleges have to draw up by the 30th of September 2020. In spite of the suddenness with which many school and college based staff as well as students had to undertake distance learning many aspects went well. This centred around the fact that generally there was a continuity of learning for the online teaching that was being implemented. EdTech skills were rapidly developed and school connections across many tiers were also maintained. This also provided an opportunity to review the ways in which many things had been done prior to lockdown so that more efficient and streamlined processes were undertaken within schools and colleges. The Department for Education laptop scheme also provided an opportunity for some of our most vulnerable students to receive laptops and 4G internet access. This scheme helped to close the digital divide. Furthermore, distance selling strategies helped to facilitate support for families where possible so that parents, carers and guardians felt more confident in helping their children to learn at home. In short, the pandemic and lockdown periods that followed accelerated the use of educational technology, edtech, and highlighted what was possible. So much so that anecdotal evidence showed that some staff wanted to continue with some of the strategies they had developed. For example, continuing to teach lessons via Zoom, pre-recording lessons with clear learning instructions, and providing learning resources for students to work through at their own pace. Inevitably, there will be challenges. Some of these challenges included assumptions made that teachers had the skill sets to undertake distance learning. This led to many didactic online lessons with limited student participation and engagement. The digital divide was also an issue where some staff did not have the necessary technological resources within their homes. For students, this meant that many lacked the means to print learning resources and assumptions were also made about students having one-to-one -one access to devices. And although not a grave issue, distance learning focuses around the country differed. For some schools and colleges, this meant they covered new learning. Others reviewed prior learning, whereas a few focused solely upon the development of specific skills. In addition, the deluge of edtech options that suddenly became available meant little time for educators and parents, carers and guardians to have clarity around data protection and payment options once the free access expired. And finally, parents, carers and guardians were unsure of how to support their child's learning and the roles that they should undertake within this as many were also working from home. The key question is, where do we go from here as we make considerations for the future with regards to distance learning? No matter what is put in place for distance or remote learning plans, it needs to build upon the school development plan so that it can enhance student progress through effective teaching and learning strategies. As budget restrictions continue to be an issue, we also need to maximise the use of technology already within a school or college. For example, repurposing laptops as Chromebooks and extensively using Office 365 or Google applications. Creating a remote teaching plan helps us to stand back and capture what made our distance learning work during spring and summer 2020. With regards to what needs to be put in place, this also includes clarity during different times of the academic year 
about whether the curriculum is being followed in its entirety, whether it's reduced, or whether it's going to be retrieval and review of prior learning. If possible, have a contingency plan for your contingency remote teaching plan. So this can help you to mitigate against unexpected issues that emerge. It's really important to communicate the plan with your stakeholders, including the young people's families, so they know what to do, for example, if they can't print work out or if an app stops working. Lastly, ensure that regular bite-sized CPD is being provided that continues to build the skill sets of staff, students and parents, carers and guardians. We can base CPD priorities for staff upon the Education Endowment Foundation's Remote Learning Report. This document highlights key findings and implications for effective remote teaching and learning. This includes the need to ensure that online teaching strategies are interactive and that there are opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer interactions or group work. The remote teaching plan should also include how online assessments will be undertaken in order to get an accurate reflection of student progress. It is important to communicate the remote teaching plan with parents, carers and guardians so that they are fully aware of what to expect and know how the school or college expects them to support learning at home. Lastly, no matter what our remote teaching plans look like, there also needs to be a focus upon mental health and well-being. The reality is that many students and their families, teaching staff, school and college leaders have been affected in various ways by the pandemic. There must be support systems in place for those who are struggling because they're in isolation, unsettled by changes to routines or anxious about the lack of certainty in the immediate future. As I draw to a close with my reflections, I'll ask two questions. How do your school or college distance learning reflections compare to what I've shared? How has this influenced the remote teaching plans you now have in place? Thank you for listening.